Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, those uh, uh, blue and those red and green and even yellow, my primary colored allies, welcome to the Day 9 Daily, episode 663, where we're going to learn to be a better gamer. First and foremost, by cracking our neck. Oh... One of these days, I'm going to drop dead on air, and it was totally worth it. Every time I've ever not died cracking my neck, divine. Mm. In today's daily, we're going to take a look at the Protoss versus Terran of a man named Patience, who made a big splurge on the scene at one of the end-of-the-year tournaments, DreamHack Winter Championships. Yeah. Where though Teja took first... Not particularly surprising as it is Teja. Life got second. Not particularly surprising as it is life. But Patience achieved third place, knocking out Pult, Innovation, MMA, and a whole slew of other beastly Terran players. Much to the surprise of everyone. So we're going to take a look, not just at a particular build order that he'll do, but at a number of openings slash styles that we'll see out of him. So we can increase our already excellent Protoss vs. Terran win rate. As many of you know, Protoss, uh, according to internets, which is known to be unreliable, according to internets, there are some angry humans who feel as though Protoss is the easiest 1A race ever. And of course, those who switch to Protoss in a brief temporary period realize that it's equally difficult, especially when a Terran just won TAs. Stim. Both sides have a lot of difficulty in different situations. So, for you poor Protoss players who are struggling versus Terran, this daily is for you. Interesting fact, this is the last daily of the year, not the last show of the year, because tomorrow I'm going to be doing a show. Um, playing some games with JP, I don't know what yet. Friday was originally structured as the Day 9's day off, because I'm really good at working myself into the ground, and we reserved one day of the week where I would just make myself play games and unwind and relax. And this week's been unbelievably stupidly busy. I haven't even looked at a game. 2014's New Year's resolution is to be more on top of that, but it's 2013, which means I can continue to eat pizza as much as I want. I have it within arm's reach. I have a glass of water, though. That's good. While it is 2013, I'll continue my string of bad habits. Happily. As many of you know or don't know, I'm in the greatest mood ever right now. Can anyone guess why? The problem is there's a 90 second delay in chat, so I have no idea. Let me tell you. I just pet a kitty tummy. Oh my god, I love Sabin's kitty tummy. He's so cute. Cause he's sleeping, he sleeps like this. Like he's like he's trying to slide underneath a door. Just as flat as can be, and I go, Sabin, and he goes. And does that adorable little cat sneer. And then I just, I, I literally grab his paw and lift up. And just go at his tummy. And, and he looks at me, and he literally shifts his hips to be on his back. It's so cute! And then I scream kitty tummy for like a minute while I pet it. Kitty tummy! Kitty tummy! Alright, hold on. It's that minute is like or that this uh, video is like another two minutes long. It's so good. We're only a minute into it. Oh, fantastic! Kitty dummy. Oh, that kitty. Okay. Oh, I feel really good. Oh man, I recorded that like maybe five days ago or something. You know what? Look, here we go. Let me show you the other cat. The other cat is equally awesome. His name's Edgar. And Edgar loves, like, this part being scratched. See, look, he just smashes his face into you. You can see the minimap in StarCraft as well. 
He's just going to town, man. He's marking me. He's like, this my human. Uh, I don't know how to tweet videos easily, at least. Whatever. Now we're here for Starcraft. Uh, to be balanced, I'm wearing a Zerg shirt from Team Liquid with a Starcraft 2. I think this is Zerg as well. Yeah, it's a Zerg sweater. Uh, while we cover this wonderful PVT game. Nifty-tastic, isn't that cool? Alright, so first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about the opening that we're going to be seeing out of Patience. We'll, we'll see it on multiple maps, but of course... Oh wait, that's right, we're using the Game Heart overlay, so let's go ahead and put this guy up here. Nice. Game Heart used throughout uh, DreamHack and many other tournaments. It's just sick. God, I love kitties. And yes, Edgar and Sabin are named after the Final Fantasy VI Princes. Alright. We got volume coming in. Perfect. So, what often happens in this matchup early on is the Protoss player typically is saying something along the lines of stuff into a really fast Colossus or Templar. That's by and large the play debt we make. And the goal is to have almost nothing but Colossus or almost nothing and High Templar really fast. There's some other builds, you know, like maybe Fast Dark Templar drop where you're kind of going for an immortal sentry defense with some DTs. And that's fine. Still the more important thing to note about the way Protosses are playing it out is just highly defensive, cut as many quarters, get away with as much shit as possible to set ourselves up for the end game. That's the way the Protosses typically think. We, we will, generally speaking, say that early aggression is ill-advised because it's so probable that a bunker will be up at the front to ruin our days or he can like for instance here's a build that is uh, that feels very um i don't want to say coin flippy we need another word than coin flippy it either it feels like it works really well or it goes horribly very binary there we go it's a very boolean build yeah so the Here's a very binary build that Protosses like to do. Really fast, four warp gate with an expand. And it feels Boolean in that if the Terran isn't expecting it, we can win immediately. And if the Terran is expecting it, we can die immediately. So people tend to write off aggressive builds. So let's see Patience do an aggressive build. Uh, is, is, would you call it a 40-40 build? Would you call it random? Ooh. No, nah, I would call it ni that sort of aggression. Neither have said things. But so we see a Patience is doing a pretty typical opening where he's actually going to be going straight for the uh, one gas. Nothing crazy like double assimilator with two in each, which is makes him very, very nice to steal from. Little things that he's doing. No, no, go away, Firefox. Enough. So we have um, little things like there's a, a sort of structural wall off here that can be really nice, especially for Reapers trying to sneak through. You can wall off the top. It just doesn't really matter because no one's really sneaking Hellions in the main that much. So Patience just does a little sweep for proxies, just a tiny, teensy sweep, and then goes back to normal. Now, if any of you have seen this, or actually, if any of you have not seen this, you haven't been watching the show, man. You let the Zealot get close to finishing, and then you cancel it so you can build a Nexus. Boom. We're building this Zealot just in case of an Engineering Bay block. So we're in Patience's shoes. We don't really know what's going on. But we do know that first things first, we're going to get up a Nexus. And then we're going to get up our mothership core. Now here's where I need to do the pause. And also I need to do the faces. Oh my god, I miss kitty tummy. I'm going to do it in the break too. <laughs> kitty tummy. There's um, two things I want to talk about. One is the immediate future and the second one is the two minutes from now future. In the immediate moment, there's a couple of buildings we need. We can see that we're going to need a second pile, or excuse me, a third pylon very soon. 
We're also going to want to get Warp Gate at our Cybernetics Core. We're also going to want to get this second Assimilator down here. We're also going to want to get something like a Sentry or a Stalker. We're going to want to build a dude. The primary purpose for said dude is to deal with, uh, oops, deal with a Reaper. So in what order do we go can often dictate what we're doing. The second thing that I want to talk about is the two minutes from now situation. <clears throat> Now, let's talk about just defense in a vacuum like a dummy. Oh, it's fun to be dumb. Mm. With Photon Overcharge, that is Nexus Cannon, um, Stalkers work really, really nicely as an early game defensive tool. Not only are they good against Reapers and Hellions, um, Reapers and Hellions are pretty good against Zealots and Sentries, but also you can stay within the protective range of the overcharge and be good against marines and marauders alike. However, we kind of want to get our sentry count started early. Because no matter what we're really doing, whether it's Colossus Tech, Zealot with Legs, even Dark Templar Drop, any Protoss build loves sentries in the mid-game. So within the next two minutes, we usually want to be building up at least the start of our sentry force. I'm just going to plant that in your brain right now so we can see what makes the patience such a pain. So first things first, gas is the first structure that goes down. <sighs> Second one is the pylon that goes down. Some nice micro that occurs. Wow, goodness, warp gate is actually the last thing that we get. Here is our Stalker as well. Last thing we get. First Assimilator, then Pylon, then Stalker, then Warp Gate. Warp Gate, I swear, is the most auto-default thing that people just do. You're just like, well, I'm nice, core may as well, but it cost 50-50. Why, why would I not? I mean, I would even do it if it cost 40-40, man. Hell no! This is good. Because we don't really need the warp gate, we're not doing a fast warp gate play. He's going to know that, but we still don't give a damn. One stalker coming out, why? Because reapers are fast, and stalkers are good against fast reapery things. Now this map, Yonsu does have this little sneaky backdoor element with some beautiful trees. I've been playing too much Starbound, I'm like, dude, we could cut this down and get some fuel to go to another replay. Um... <laughs> But here, yeah, we have a lot of space to cover. Reapers can pop up anywhere here and anywhere here. Now let's note some things that Patience is doing. With this very early second assimilator, he has enough gas to pop down a, a Twilight Council. I'll tell you right now, this is actually going to be for Blink. So there's usual things going on, like building of probes, chrono boosting of the Nexus, almost all on the probes. Come on, do it, Patience, make me look good. Thanks, you're my dog. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, Patience is just playing purely defensively, has not really scouted out, is going for this Twilight Council build blind. And look, thanks to that early second geyser, we both have just enough gas to get the Twilight and enough gas to follow up with Blink. What an elegant little build we're seeing here. Now, this is where I want to talk about the sentries as a potential defensive tool. Um, sentries are not the best defensive tool. They just don't work well with Photon Overcharge early on. Yeah, you can like force field your ramp, but the main reason you get sentries early is to build up energy for the mid game. Stalkers are a much better all round defensive tool, but stalkers suck in the mid game. They're only really useful against picking off Vikings and occasionally medevacs, but not really that much against Marine Marauder. So, this is why most people tend to avoid them. But, if we get Blink, we actually extend the utility of these here Stalkers. This is not the all-in variant. I know that many people are freaking their freaking head off about those. It's not that at all. Almost every Chrono Boost has been going onto probes up until these two gateways go down. And then the Chrono is on the Stalker. This is another reason why the uh, stalker or, or the stalker is such a good defensive tool. Now, 
Ordinarily, people love to just go all in now, because let's be honest, why go to three base when you can put your opponent at zero base? Day nine is always thinking. Most of the time people go all in right now, it's really easy and fun. We've seen Oz attempt to do some transitions out of there, but we're going to see Patience do a very beautiful one. First and foremost, note that 6.30 is a very early time to double gas at your expo. I mean, 6 is about as early as it gets, but 6.30 is still great. We're not really sacrificing anything. Remember, the Chrono Boosts are still going down on here. Once we build these two gateways, everything explodes into action. Chrono's here, double gas over here, we get a third Stalker over here. And even gets spotted. So we've looked at this build uh, thus far. We're going to talk about a couple of next steps. Notice that the Robo Facility is also going down while all this is being set up. Patience has only really just sent a probe out. Patience has not scouted anything else. This is purely like a nice safety play. Perhaps the only thing we really lose to is a guy who's going for a Mega Banshee Rush. But guess what? He's not going for a Mega Banshee Rush. This is where patience begins to spread out. What? Dude. No. Oh, dude. No. Allow access. Dude. I don't know if this has been happening with you with the new Battle.net thing. But it's been happening with me. Let me just make sure my internet's still rolling. Test. Check. Can you hear me? Every now and again when that happens, when it's like, hey, do you want to update and everything? It just goes to hell. Perfect. Okay, so at this point in time, we're seeing this attack move forward. We're seeing some goody goodness happen here. Here's how we're going to proceed. We're going to rewatch this period of the game a couple of times. First, let's watch the back home of what Patience is doing, ignoring the fight. Once we get that blink up, Chrono Boost all back to the probes. When's a good time to halt Chrono Boosting on the probes? When we have 16 on minerals and 3 in gas at each base. At that point in time, it becomes very useful to Chrono Boost other things, like this observer. I always want to be getting like one observer, or excuse me, I always want to be getting like two observers. Getting just one is um, a recipe for the disaster. But right after this, look at Patience. He's actually not very low on gas. Crap. He's actually not very low on gas. God, I keep scrolling. He's not very low on gas. He is. 410. So a very prompt Robo Bay is also going to go down. To do some maths, Robo Bays take a minute. Colossus, you can't see it here, but with Chrono Boost, it takes a minute. So whenever our Robo Bay starts, we'll have a Colossus two minutes later. Um, this is an important thing to note because we really kind of need the Colossus out if we want to be able to beat our opponent uh, who has Medivacs, which we see are actually almost out. But this is about all I'm going to be doing up to like 10 minutes. We see that it's just one observer, two observer. They're just placed strategically to do spottings on our enemy. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now I'm going to rearrange my mouse because it keeps scrolling out of control. Cool. There we go. Looking through here, the Chrono Boost target is obvious, our upgrades. And also, uh, getting up our super fast Colossus is going to be great. This one's a slight bit behind, as you can see. It hasn't quite been started. This should have popped out at 10.30, but instead it's going to get started around then. Dude, I think I need to get a new mouse. This one just doesn't scroll. So, for instance, right now, there we go. I'm going left to right, and occasionally... It does that. Nice. Kitties like to play with the mouse and the mouse pad, but we let them. We don't ever blame the kitties. Yeah, so this is sort of how we get to the 10, 11 minute mark. First getting these three things with Blink. Then, of course, the Robo for the Observers and the Colossus. But a Double Forge comes up. We're not terribly far behind on the upgrades either. So now that we have that going on, we need to take a trip back in time. We're going to take a trip to... There we go. 
I think that this will be at seven minutes. Yeah, that's perfect. Blink's about to finish. This blink does come out quite quickly. And at the start of this uh, segment, I was talking about, wow, Protoss players really don't like doing super aggressive variants of builds because of the fact that it feels very uh, Boolean. It either does amazingly or it does horrifically. The best part about the, this kind of blink opening is that we do have a ton of maneuverability. We can apply pressure. Look at what tactically this allows us to do. We can put these pylons over here and it's safe. Th these are protected pylons. This isn't you sending the probe out and just hoping to God the Terran player doesn't see it with a Reaper. This is you actually checking around. If there's vulnerabilities here, we can blink into the main. Pick those things off. Generally, we skirt around the main. And we see Innovation having to build all these bunkers for defense. And all we did was build six Stalkers. That's it. That was the only thing. We even have the Observer in position. Remember that probe, that protected probe? Yeah, he's just getting the chance to build everything that he so desireth. And it's a pretty easy time to delay our Terran opponent. Almost even got a medevac. But what do we lose? Nada. Literally nothing. We're even doing little bits of damage by forcing him to stim. Now what I want to do is I want to pull back a full, full length of time back to the start of the game to see things from the Terran point of view. Because I think to really get, um, to get the most uh, effective glimpse as to the strengths of this Blink Stalkery kind of play, we want to see what it does to the Terran. So if any of you are curious about what this build is, watch daily number 662 where we took an analysis of MMA's um, Terran vs. Protoss. And how he was so aggressive. Getting up his, uh, the Reaper to do that scouting and aboutin'. Getting a very fast double barracks. Innovation's actually doing the same things that MMA did. Cutting corners. Second gas is soon to arrive. These marines can easily waltz way far forward on the map or just chill here. There's not a ton of need for them to um, <coughs> Yeah. There's not a ton of need for these marines to stay at home because there are no units out for patients other than a single stalker that's playing passive and we know that because of our wonderful reaper. Innovation is continuing to keep a fast pace on everything. Marines coming out. Stim being started very early. This will be done by 8.30, a key timing for a lot of early aggression. In fact, the Stim will be done in time for the ever-so-scary push. But here comes a factory. Super early. Six minutes it's going to go down. That's going to mean a very, 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 very early, early, early starport for us. Ooh, a very early engineering bay. Allow me to use other words that are superlatives. The most early engineering bay of all time. Fantastic. A single uh, barracks goes down. But Blink has been identified, two gateways have been identified, and let's look at the impact that this has on our Terran player. I'm going to occasionally go to his point of view so we can see on the minimap what's going on. A second engineering bay goes down. Look at the money for innovation. Look at the positioning for innovation. Having to hold everything back, having to keep everything in the main base. Building another bunker. Building another bunker. No barracks can go down right now. Look, he has enough for uh, a bunker. Excuse me. He has enough for a barracks, but he's going to be throwing down a bunker. He's going to be getting more units. Now that this tech lab is done, 99 out of 100 Terrans will go ahead and immediately get the combat shield. Or concussive shell. Just will do something with this tech lab. Wow, look at this very early set of medevacs. Most of the time, it's safe for a Terran player to leave his base now, head to this watchtower, and then when these medevacs are out, they can super speed boost to meet the uh, Terran army, and innovation could attack a lot earlier. Well, let's take a look. Almost done. Not quite done. Oh, wow. An, a geyser hasn't been started here. 
This third geyser is critical for being able to continue medevac production and do other things like get upgrades. This third gas is one of one of the secretest strengths of this build that occasionally you can um, delay the third gas a lot. Most of the time you'll delay it some. All right, see, look, there it is. Woo, boy, howdy, that's late. We can tell it's late by the fact that Innovation only has 150 gas. He can't build new medevacs. can only build one. And he can't do that and get this armor. So look at the medevacs. Staying back, staying passive. Medevacs hasn't moved out yet. Terran Army could have moved out at 8.30. It hasn't. It's been delayed by almost a full minute. Let's look at these delays. Delays, 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 delays. Another secret little thing that's been delayed a shitload. This third barracks. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mmm. Oh, it feels so good to see that happen. Only six stalkers. Delays, 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 and perhaps even potential vulnerabilities. And after delays, 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 finally gets to move right on out. And I think that probably the most eye-opening moment is right around 10.30. We see the strength of this uh, fascinating little opening. We see a reasonable set of uh, units from patients. These three sentries are very new. They haven't had a lot of time to charge. We talked before that this Colossus could have been done right now. Patience literally just forgot to build it. He had the money. Everything was there. He just slipped. But the Terran army would, isn't here yet. Could have had this Colossus up, but it wasn't. In other words, this delay tactic from these stalkers is more than enough time to get you up the defenses that you need. And innovation, only at 1030 does he begin the next step to his build. Normally... 8.30 is a time when you can start a, a third command center. Normally, by this point in time, these three barracks are done, and two more barracks are finished, or at the very least, close to finished, by 10.30. Most of the time, plus one armor is already underway. I mean, the amount of delays here is sick. It's so sick. <sighs> production for Terran is absolutely, or I should say production. Structures for Terran are absolutely critical. Delays in those ruin games for Terrans. And this is because a Terran barracks needs to be constantly producing. Protoss gateways don't need to be constantly producing. In fact, most of the time they are idle. The things that do need to be constantly producing is the robo which we saw patience just slip up on a little bit. So this excellent little opening from patience. We're going to see in part two how patience finishes innovation in this position, doing some nice uh, transitions. And then we're going to see patience do a variation on it on this opening versus MMA, going for a blink stalker all in with the same opening when things go awry because they know you love damn easy wins. And then in part three, we'll take a look at some more funky stuff. Might be a slightly longer break, Closer to four minutes, but don't worry, because when we come back, we're going to continue to learn the shit out of patience.